emerging from the straight times. You, you say today, and uh, other PAB leaders have said in the past, that um, in your search for candidates, uh, you look for people uh, who don't necessarily agree with the policies of the government. Um, but at the same time, we see today, as well as in the first three batches, um, candidates who say that they do not disagree with the fundamental principles of the policies of Singapore. So there seems to be some kind of a disparity there. How do you reconcile that disparity? And uh, would you um, field candidates who disagreed with the fundamental principles of the government? So for example, would you field a candidate who believed in welfareism or a candidate who um, disagreed with the GRC system, for example? Yeah. Well, first off, uh, first off, I don't think there's a disparity. There's no uh, contradiction that they believe in the fundamental principles. In fact, the question was asked of previous candidates, you know, what is it that you disagree with? And I think they gave very sensible answers. Uh, very hard to disagree with uh, the fundamentals in terms of meritocracy, in terms of uh, multi-religious aspects, in terms of the political system. But uh, the question is, would we feel candidates who disagreed with our policies, the answer is yes, if they could give a rationale why they believe their system, what they believe in would work, work better, if they could convince others, because uh, it's a pluralistic society, uh, cabinet makes decisions, but there's a lot of um, discussions, and there's no one view, there are many times different views, and uh, you have to persuade others that your view makes more sense, makes for Singapore uh, a better decision, a better framework. Uh, when we look for candidates, as if you, um, from what I've said, we looked at the four qualities, and uh, agreeing with us wasn't one of them. I mean, uh, you would have many instances where somebody doesn't have all the information, and or if he had all the information, would come in with a different perspective, and we welcome that. So the four essential qualities were, as I stated, uh, and even in our own experiences as ministers or as MPs, we came in with different views uh, which change over time. We're not uh, monolithic or unchanging. As you deal with certain things, I would, for myself, say for certain things, I've, I've changed my own mind for, for various aspects. If you remember, for example, um, Desmond in one of the interviews said he initially started out not agreeing with the IRs and then seeing that it, you know, there were benefits and then now a gradual acceptance but still worried about the consequences. And I think that's a very honest, uh, candid view. I mean, you may want to ask the candidates what they feel, but um, in, in terms of your response, uh, question, this would be my responses. Did you ask anything else? Um, I think if somebody believes so fundamentally in a system that's different from Singapore, uh, it would be hard for him to accept how we do things. And, and so I think it's a bit theoretical. Uh, we haven't found candidates who, who said, you know, uh, I believe in welfareism completely. So uh, my, 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 question, my answer is that it's a bit theoretical and uh, I would rather deal with issues that candidates are here rather than just theor theoretical constructs. Not very useful. I think that's it. Shane? Um, um, you describe a very rigorous and exhaustive process in looking for the candidates, um, but um, one that has been tried and tested over a long period of time. Given that this is about looking for the fourth generation leadership, um, which means um, a leader, leaders who can lead um, a different generation of Singaporeans, perhaps more sceptical, what were the things that you th that may be more sceptical, for instance? Sceptical? Yes. What were the things that um, you did differently or maybe questions that you asked differently in your search this time around? On core aspects, we, I don't think we've changed. Well, let me deal with that in terms of processes and what we're looking for. In terms of processes, we haven't changed. Uh, we think, yes, it's a tried and tested method. There's nothing that can replace uh, eyeball-to-eyeball assessment, body language, 
responses to questions, nuances, um, pauses, length of pauses, uh, inflections, and the like. Uh, and this was not done once or one on one you only. Uh, candidates got to see senior party members or in any given session, 8 to 12, sometimes more, uh, repeatedly. Uh, we're trying to get a measure of the person, as I said, in the four essential qualities. Uh, we were not looking really for pet answers. This is not a job interview. <laughs> but we were looking for people that we could believe that could bring Singapore forward and be ready to change. Because we don't believe that the future is fixed. We believe that our core values, our fundamentals must be correct because we've done well. But we don't believe that the future will always be the same. And the only way to institute change, the best way to institute change is from within. And that's why we're bringing a spread of candidates. On average, they'll be about 20 years younger than the ones that they're replacing as a group. And that results in a structure that has a very wide span, different perspectives, young, old, private sector, public sector, social workers, business, that basically gives us a very good feel of what society would respond and how we want to move forward. I mean, that's how we think that Singaporeans would want their MPs and together collectively as a government to make decisions. A lot of the issues you talk about are, like you said, long term. Uh, but what are you going to do? The, the, the election here, I think most of the issues that are going to decide whether you come in or not will be also short term. So, what do you see as the more immediate challenges to get yourself elected this time around? Well, you can't blame us for thinking long term. You probably blame us. Most governments have been blamed for being short termism, you know, or being short term. So, uh, thank you. That uh, I take that as a, a compliment that we are thinking long term, uh, and indeed that's our preoccupation. How do we continue this system, which by and large has worked well for Singapore? Short-term issues, we have to address them. You're quite right. You know, uh, we talked about it during budget in terms of cost of living, in terms of issues about housing, trying to explain the policies, uh, inflation, cost of oil, cost of uh, utilities. Those we have the means to address. But the long-term issues are structural aspects. If you don't bring in the right people to replace you or to continue the system, you can't at the last moment decide and that you, know, you, you, you try to... Um, ferret out from somewhere, you know, individuals that need the, the test of time. Because my my own experience is that uh, I've been ten years now, and I and I'm still learning a lot about systems, about leadership, about people. So I would think that somebody who is who we are bringing in bright ones, brighter ones, I hope. Uh, that they will need equally the same, if not more time, to be able to understand how government and society works. 